Welcome to Integrated Spine Pain and Wellness Pain Perspective. I am Nikki Goyle and I am here with my husband, Dr. Ashu Goyle. He is our regenerative medicine and chronic pain specialist at ISPW. And today the topic is sports related injuries. So we get a lot of patients that come in with sports related injuries, typically uh, tennis and golfer's elbow. So we wanted to have a segment where we kind of describe what this pain is and some treatments that you can do that can help get you back on the court and get you back on the golf course doing what you love. So Dr. Goyle, can you tell us what exactly is golfer, golfers and tennis elbow? Absolutely. So I would say those are the two, two of the most common things that I see in the practice. Oh, okay. Um, the majority of patients, especially in Scottsdale, love mm -hmm. to play tennis or golf. Um, mm -hmm. Golf is really big in the community here. So, um, I mean, I see golfers every day. So, and people who play golf love golf. Yeah. So one of the one of the motions with golf, though, is this uh, this rotation of the wrist and elbow. Okay. And so what can happen is patients can develop what we call a, a tendonitis. Okay. Which is inflammation of the tendon. Uh, where it attaches to the inside of the elbow oh, wow. so that we call that medial epicondylitis that's mm -hmm. golfer's elbow and so that can become inflamed mm -hmm. and painful and it can limit people's ability to play the sport okay to an optimal level right right i'll go into tennis elbow it's basically the same thing but okay. it's on the opposite side of the elbow so this is mm -hmm. an, what we call an extensor tendinopathy or a lateral epicondylitis okay which is inflammation of where the tendons attach to the bone Okay. on the elbow, so the epicondyle there. So both of these uh, types of injuries can become very painful, they can oh, be okay. debilitating, and they can take people out of the sport that they love to play. So, Now, what are some of the symptoms that patients will experience and how will they know if they are starting to develop uh, either golfers or tennis elbow? Well, um, typically if you're playing golf and you have pain in your elbow on the inside, okay, then you'll you, know. you might think, okay. okay, well, I've got a problem here. I'm feeling something here. And mm -hmm. same thing with the tennis elbow. And You'll... does it work that way? Sorry to interrupt That's you, okay. but does it work that way for, so if you're a tennis player, will you ever feel it on the inside or that's typically golf typically golf but okay. you sure can because it's a whole functional unit that's involved okay so but typically tennis elbow is more on the outside and it involves the extensors and then golfer's elbows on the medial aspect the inside and involves the flexing the flexor tendons interesting but um i see patients that have both issues so we'll just treat the whole functional unit okay so, so typically uh, when a patient comes in for an examination, when they're having symptoms, what are some of the things that you are looking for to confirm that this is in fact what they have? Uh, well, the physical exam is okay. a big part of it. The history also. So patients will pretty much tell me what okay. it is um, just by describing the nature of their injury, the type of pain they're having, and their functional limitations. Okay. So based on that, a physical exam, it's, uh, it's a pretty common diagnosis and uh, pretty fairly easy to make. And so what are some of the treatments um, that you recommend for people who are going through these types of injuries and, and pain? Well, it depends on the extent of the injury and also their pain. Okay. Um, if it's minor, then anti-inflammatories, over-the-counter mm -hmm. medications, such as Advil, Tylenol, Aleve. Um, topical anti-inflammatories. Okay. Uh, there's a diclofenac gel or Voltaren, which is pretty popular. Mm -hmm. um, things like that, ice. You know, and then some rest, but then physical therapy to really rehab the muscles and get the get the tendons to fire and function appropriately. And is this something that heals typically on its own or, it, you know, do you have to do other treatments to get it to correct itself? It is, that's a case by case situation. Okay. So um, if it's not healed within a few months, then it can turn into a chronic pain state, which is something okay. we want to avoid. So if it turns into chronic pain, then we might look at, you know, further imaging like uh, uh, MRI study, diagnostic ultrasound to really come up with uh, what the pathology is and what the, you know, treatment options are. Okay. Um, you know, for more severe cases, we would consider cortisone injections. Okay. So that can reduce inflammation immediately. Um, and the downside of that, however, is that the cortisone we know is toxic to the tissues. 
So in some cases, it can actually make the condition worse long term. Oh, okay. But there's more of an immediate effect, so um, we have to weigh the risk versus the benefits. Um, another option, which is more long term and possibly more sustaining, would be regenerative medicine. Okay. Um, there are several studies, and we have level one evidence, which is the highest evidence in medicine for treatments. Uh, there's level one evidence to support PRP for use of treating um, lateral epicondylitis or the, uh, the tennis elbow. Okay. And so um, I always say if you can treat one tendon, you should be able to extrapolate mm -hmm. that data to other tendons throughout the body. Okay. So, um, so PRP is an option. Okay. And that's where we concentrate the blood and the plasma and the growth factors and re-inject it into the injured areas to reduce inflammation and stimulate healing of that tissue. Wow, yeah, mm -hmm. it's amazing. And if you've been following us for you know a while now, you know that we've talked about regenerative medicine in the past and really the benefits of regenerative medicine. And I guess my next question would be, if you are a golfer or you are a tennis player and you want to do regenerative medicine to hopefully prevent further in injury, is that a possibility? Um, it's a possibility. We okay. don't have any uh, solid data to support that. Okay. But um, the good thing about PRP and regenerative medicine <clears throat> is it is using your body's own ability to help heal and fight inflammation. Okay. So when we, re we inject this into other areas of your body, it's incredibly safe. Okay. So it's not going to do harm. Okay. Physical harm, it's a little uncomfortable when we do the procedure, mm -hmm. but uh, mm -hmm. we do everything in our power to minimize discomfort. Okay. Yeah. And typically, what is the recovery like with somebody who does regenerative medicine after? Like, how long is it going to take to get them back on to the court um, or to the golf course? Um, well, with cortisone injections, we'll talk about that first. That, okay. uh, that usually takes three to ten days. Okay. And then um, the inflammation is reduced ideally pretty profoundly. And then um, people can go back to playing their sports. But the concern is that if there is a tendon tear or, um, or an injury there, they could actually make it worse. So okay. <clears throat> I recommend, you know, at least to four to six weeks physical therapy after the pain is under better control. If we're going the regenerative medicine route, um, that does take longer, and it may require several treatments. So typically there's downtime for about a week, and then aggressive physical therapy begins uh, at the beginning of week two. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, if somebody does a cortisone shot, do they also have to follow up with physical therapy? Uh, ideally. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's a comprehensive approach. Uh, okay. The cortisone is just simply reducing inflammation. It's not mm -hmm. doing anything to prevent further injury or uh, to strengthen the whole functional unit and keep the elbow uh, working optimally. So when you send someone to physical therapy after they've had either their regenerative medicine or cortisone shots, what will they typically uh, do with the physical therapist in order to help you know, heal their, um, their issue even more? So um, yeah, so when a patient sees a physical therapist, the goal would be to restore function. Okay. So, and that's a multimodality approach. So specifically with a lot of the tendonitis, tendinopathies that we see, um, that'll involve strengthen, strengthening okay. um, some ultrasound, you know, different modalities to reduce inflammation. Okay. And then um, possibly dry needling. Oh, and so okay. that's where uh, actually a regenerative medicine technique yeah. that physical therapists do where they will use acupuncture needles to stimulate uh, inflammation and injury oh, wow. of the tendon so that it can actually heal itself. Wow. So um, I work closely with physical therapists who specialize in that, yeah. especially with my regenerative medicine patients. Mm -hmm. So dry needling is a big key component of that. Yeah, I love how you have so many different uh, ways to help treat patients and it's not just you know, one specific thing. You really think outside the box and you know, use different tools that are available. Yeah, well, so. pain, pain can be very complex. And, yeah. And everyone has different goals with managing their pain. Okay. So, and, you know, they've got different expectations and, um, you know, lifestyles. And right. All Absolutely. that comes into play. So that helps me gear my treatment plan. Wonderful. For each individual patient. Wonderful. Well, this has been such an interesting topic that we've been discussing today. And we have a lot of great information that Dr. Goyle provided for us. So if you want to learn more about these treatments and what we offer at Integrated Spine Pain and Wellness, you can visit our website, 
Uh, you can also call our front desk and we have lovely uh, ladies at the front who would be happy to answer any questions you have or schedule you for a consultation um, or an appointment with Dr. Goyle. So stay tuned for more topics with Dr. Goyle and myself. Thank you. Thank you.